Welcome back, future engineers and construction pros. In today's session, we're diving into a crucial tool in structural engineering, reinforced column design using interaction diagrams. Ever wondered how columns in our buildings stand strong under various loads? Interaction diagrams are the key. They help us understand the balance between axial load and bending moments. In this video, we will break down these complex concepts into simple, actionable steps using the guidelines of ACI 318. So whether you're prepping for an exam or tackling a real life project, stay tuned as we unlock the secrets of column design. As you can see in this example, it says that design a short squared column for the following conditions. The ultimate axial load is 600 kilopounds. The ultimate moment is calculated to be 80 kilopound times feet and the compressive strength of concrete is 4,000 PSI. Last but not least, we have the yield strength of steel to be 60,000 PSI. Place the bars uniformly around all four faces of the column. So the first step in here would be to calculate the gross sectional area of the column. In this example, we assume that the column will be able to resist 60% of the compression stress. As the compressive strength of this concrete was 4,000 PSI, 60% of that would be 2,400 PSI. Once we calculated this, in the next step, we will calculate the gross sectional area. In order to obtain the value for the gross sectional area, we will divide the ultimate axial load by the 60% of the compressive strength. That would be dividing 600,000 pounds or 600 kilopounds by 2,400 pounds per square inch. This will be 250 squared inches. Since we were asked in the example to select a squared column, we will use a 16 by 16 inches column, which will be 256 inch square. In the next step, we will calculate the eccentricity. The eccentricity would be the distance between the centroid and the point where the axial load is assumed to be acting. In order to obtain this, we will divide the ultimate moment by the ultimate axial load. In other words, we will have MU or ultimate moment which was given to be 80 kilopounds times feet divided by 600 kilopounds. This will be 0 0.13 feet, or in other words, if we convert it to inches and multiply it by 12, we will have 1.6 inches. In this step, we are going to calculate the nominal axial load. In order to calculate this, we will divide the ultimate load by 0 0.65 for feet. This will be 923 kilopounds. We are obtaining this to calculate the values for Rn and Kn, which are basically the x and y axis of an interaction diagram. The value Kn, in other words, is normalized action load, while Rn is the normalized ultimate moment. In order to obtain the values for Kn and Rn, for Kn, we will use this formula as it's given in ACI 318. We will evaluate the values in here and we will have 600 kilopounds divided by compressive strength of concrete times the gross sectional area of the column. This will result in 0 0.901. In order to calculate the normalized moment, we will use this formula. We will evaluate the places and we will have Rn to be 600 kilopounds times the eccentricity divided by compressive strength of concrete times gross sectional area. And lastly, we have the edge of the column, which in both sides is 16 inches. So we'll write down 16 inches in here. This will be 0 0.0901. Next, as you can see in here on the interaction diagram, we need to calculate the value for gamma. In order to obtain the value for gamma, we know that one side of our column is 16 inches, and we are going to deduct the clear covers from both sides. The total clear cover will be 5 inches. Once we deduct it from 16 inches, 11 inches will be remaining. The ratio between 11 inches and 16 inches will result in the value for gamma. So for that purpose, we will divide this and the value for gamma will be 0 0.6875. Now, if you refer to the interaction diagrams, we have two of them. One is for gamma 0 0.6, 
another is for gamma 0 0.7. So we have to interpolate the values between these two. So the value for Rn was 0 0.0901. So what we will do is we'll connect this with the value for Kn, which was 0 0.901. So basically it will be somewhere here. We'll assume this is 0 0.025 for gamma 0 0.6. And for this one, if we go, and again, from here, I'll draw a straight line, and I will connect it with 0 0.901, which was the value, the other one. So this is assumed to be slightly over 0 0.02. Let's pick 0 0.022. Once we have that, what we need to do is to interpolate between these two values. In order to interpolate, what we need to do is we'll divide the difference between the y values by the difference between the x values. 0 0.022 minus 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.7 minus 0 0.6. This value will give us the slope. Now once we have this, for the second part what we will do is we'll interpolate the value between these two. So basically 0 0.6875 minus 0 0.6 divided by rho minus 0 0.025 will be minus 0 0.03. Once we obtain that, and by interpolating, we will be able to calculate the value of root to be 0 0.022375. Now, in order to get the value for the steel or the steel area, we'll multiply this by the gross cross-sectional area of the column. For that purpose, I'll write down that steel area equals to root times gross cross-sectional area of the column. As we have the gross cross-sectional area of the column and the value for rho, we will be able to obtain the value for steel. And by evaluating different numbers, we came up to the conclusion to use eight number eight bars. Here is how our column cross-section will look like. So I hope you found the content of the video helpful. If you did so, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and following us on Instagram and LinkedIn for more useful project management and civil engineering tips. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.